Welcome back to the band guide. I'm your band guy, Colin. And today is the second video in the GarageBand to Logic Bootcamp series where we're going through everything you need to know to make the switch from GarageBand to Logic. Last week, we covered an overview of all the windows that you have in Logic. So if you haven't already seen that, definitely go check that out. Today, we're gonna be looking at all the features that you unlock in Logic. There's some really cool stuff. So definitely stick around for this. There's five features that we're gonna cover in today's video. And then next week, we're gonna go through all the tools and plugins that you get in Logic that you didn't have in GarageBand. But before we get into it, I want to give you something if you don't already have my six step checklist to a pro mix be sure to pick it up it just goes through the six steps that all professional mixes have and how to work through them systematically specifically inside logic it's completely free from link in the description below so be sure to grab it but let's go and jump inside logic and take a look at these features all right the first feature we unlock in logic that we didn't have in GarageBand is fades and crossfades these are really helpful anytime you're working with audio regions recorded audio here we have some recorded electric guitar and a crossfade allows us to fade between multiple regions Regions. So let's say I had a perfect performance and then I messed up right at the end. And so I just want to record just this end again. I could record just this end and then crossfade between the two. And that's going to give me a smooth transition. Now a fade in is going to be exactly what it sounds like. We can fade in. This can help make sure that there's no click or pop at the start of this audio. And that's a nice seamless transition into this audio coming in. Or you could actually even fade in on this if you wanted to have a longer fade in. So it kind of came in quiet at the beginning and fades in. Similarly, a fade out allows us just to fade out the end if we just want to make sure that it's not obvious where that audio ends or we could really tailor the length of a note so for example this guitar sustains just a little longer than i want it to check it out here I probably want it to be all the way out at this point, but the guitar naturally sustained a little bit longer here. So what I could do is shorten the length of this and then just have a fade out so it's all the way out by this point. And then if we listen to that. And if it's not fading out as fast as we want to, we could have it fade out faster like this. Or we could make it gentler if we wanted it to be a gentler fade out or we could just shorten the overall fade time to make it an even faster fade out. Now, a little bonus trick with fades is that we can also use them to give you that kind of like vinyl stop effect. So if we make this a really short fade out here, I could actually take this and right click on it and select slow down. And now instead of being a fade, it's gonna sound like this. Kind of like that vinyl stop sound. So that can be really cool for some transitions. You can also do the same thing as a speed up on the way into a note. So it can be a really cool effect depending on what you're going for. Now, two quick notes about fades and crossfades. First of all, they're going to affect any region that you have selected. So if I select this track here, but I only wanted to fade out the end of this region, well, because I selected this track and it automatically selected all the regions, I've now added a fade to every region here. So that can be really annoying. So be sure that you only selected the region that you want to have a fade on or crossfade on. The second point is that to enable the pointer tool to have this crossfade just from the top of a region functionality, we need to go up to our settings and go to general and then be sure to go to editing and then make sure that it says pointer tool and tracks provides fade tool click zones. That enables us to just pull from the end of a region to add a fade out fade in from the beginning of a region or from one region over into the next region, we can create a crossfade. So make sure that you enable that setting. And speaking of tools and settings, it's actually the second feature that Logic gives us that we didn't have in GarageBand, and that's access to multiple tools and the ability to set two tools. Now to set two tools, you need to go back up to your settings, go down to settings, all the way down to advanced, and from here, you just need to make sure that enable complete features is on. If this is off, you'll see that we only have one tool up here. But if you turn this on, you will immediately get two tools. Now, there's a lot of tools that we have access to. I'm not gonna go through each tool in this video, but I have done a video where I've gone through what every tool does. So I'll link to that in the description and above in a card here. So be sure to check that out. But the main two tools that I use are the pointer tool. And then in my second position, I use my marquee tool. And once you've enabled this, you just need to hold command on the keyboard to enable your second tool. And by having the marquee tool as my second tool, I can select a region while holding command. And then I can let off command and click on that region and it will separate it out. Or I could select a region like this and I could hold option and drag it over and it's gonna copy that region anywhere I want it to go. Or I could just select a region and hit play and it's just gonna play that little region that I've selected with the marquee tool. So those are my, definitely my top two tools and I recommend that you use 
these as your main two tools as well. But there is one other tool that I wanna mention, and that is your gain tool. Now this actually goes hand in hand with the third feature that you get in Logic that you didn't have in GarageBand, which is clip gain. So the gain tool, if you're using a newer version of Logic, allows you to turn up or down the volume of a region of audio. And you could use this in conjunction with the marquee tool where I could select this phrase here and then go back to my gain tool and turn up that just that phrase that I selected with my marquee tool. And I could come over here to this region and turn up just that phrase right there. So you can get really specific and turn up different phrases to make sure that it all sounds really even in the final performance. Now, if you're in an older version of Logic that doesn't have the gain tool, or if you just want to do one small region, you don't want to go through all the hassle of changing out your tool, you can also just hit I on the keyboard to bring over your inspector here and hit this little triangle here to bring down this option. And then I can just bring up or down the gain right here on whatever region I have selected. So I can make this one phrase a whole lot louder, a whole lot quieter, and just balance out the volume of all my regions. So again, this area right here is a little bit quieter than the next phrase, so I could just go and turn up this whole region right here, and it's gonna balance out that volume at the clip gain level. So clip gain is the third feature that we didn't have in GarageBand that we now have in Logic. And the fourth is buses. Now buses sound confusing and they kind of get a bad rap, but they're actually incredibly simple. There's three main ways that we use buses. The first is for effects. The second is to process multiple tracks together, like all your vocals all together, or all your drums all together. And the third way is to organize our session. So let's go through these really quickly and stick with me here you'll see buses are actually very, very simple. So here on this part of the song, I have all these vocals doing this whoa vocal part. Check this out. Now, if I wanted to have reverb on all of these tracks, I could either put a reverb on each of these individual tracks, or I could send them all using a bus to one reverb track. So here, if we look at it in this view, we have all these tracks, and I'm just gonna go here where it says sends, I'm gonna go down to bus one, and that's gonna create a new track over here. This is aux track two, we're just gonna call this reverb. And then on this track, I could go down to my reverbs, and we'll just go to space designer, and let's just find a really long plate reverb, and we'll just do this four second big plate. And now, I can select all these tracks again, and as I turn up this knob, it's gonna turn up the amount that I'm sending this track over to this reverb track. So now listen to this. So instead of having to set up a reverb on each of these tracks and tweak it on each of these tracks and use up all that computer processing power, I set up one bus and one reverb on a reverb track over here, and now I'm bussing it over to that track. Very, very efficient. Okay, as I said, the second way that we do this is to process tracks together. So let's take this a step further, and let's say I wanna take all these tracks, and let's say we wanna EQ them all together with one EQ. We can do that by creating a track stack, which is our fifth feature that we unlock in Logic, and it's using buses to set this up. So to create a track stack, we're going to select the tracks that we want to have together and process together. We're going to hit Command, Shift, and D on the keyboard. And that's going to bring up an option here. And we want to do a summing stack. We'll hit Create. And what it's going to do here is it's going to create this summing folder or track stack. We're going to just call this Vox for vocals. And what we can see here, if we look in the second view, is now all these vocals have the output as three, instead of being routed to the stereo output like they were before, they're all going to bus three. And now the input for this new track here is bus three. So now if I want to add an EQ that's gonna affect how all of these vocals sound, I can just click here to add an EQ. That's gonna add an EQ on my Vox bus here. And I can just go in while listening to them. Cut out some of that, maybe add a little bit of brightness. A little bit of sheen in the upper end, maybe high pass the whole thing. And now my entire vocal channel is going to have a much, much brighter sound than it did before. And then I could also take it a step further again and select all of these tracks and turn off this bus. And I could just send one bus from this track stack to that reverb, and it would have the same effect as sending it from all these individual tracks. <gasps> And in fact, in this case, it's actually after this EQ, whereas over here it would have been before the EQ, but that's neither here nor there at the moment. Okay, so that is a track stack for processing together. And as I said, you could do this for anything. If I wanted to go up here, and let's say I wanted to take all of my guitars and hold Command Shift and D and create a summing stack, 
then I could select this and title it Guitars. And now this is a track stack that has all of my guitars now routed to bus five and the input of this track stack is bus five. Logic creates that automatically for us. And I can go onto this track stack and I could add an EQ for all of my guitars. So in the context of the mix, let's see what we might wanna add. So with one EQ, I took my guitars from sound like this to this. We might be adding a little bit of volume, but in general, I just got them to cut through the mix a little bit more, sound a little bit fuller, and all I did was set up one EQ that's affecting all of my guitars. So you can see how that would allow you to mix a little bit faster, right? It's a really, really cool effect. Okay, and as I said, the third way that you use buses is simply organization. Now, this is again, hand in hand with the track stack. So the cool thing about a track stack is I can now fold this, and now I just have a guitars track stack. I could take all of my keys here, select all of them, and hit Command Shift and D on the keyboard, create another summing stack and we're just going to call this keys and then I can fold that down and now I can take all of my lead vocals here and can select all of these title this lead vox and fold that down and now my session instead of being all the tracks that it was is just a handful of tracks that's much easier to look at all my guitars all my keys and I could fold out these guitars and get into them more specifically and then fold them back so that's the third way that I use buses which is just for organization to make it easier to move around in my session so that's buses you can see how it's a really powerful tool that doesn't necessarily need to actually be confusing now if you don't already have it, be sure to grab my six step checklist to a pro mix. This checklist just goes through the six steps that all professional mixes have and how to do them specifically inside Logic. It's completely free from link in the description below. It's really gonna help you out. At the end of the day, Logic isn't automatically just gonna make your music sound better. If you have a system that you work through that incorporates all of these six steps, then your music will automatically sound better. As long as you're being intentional in how you go through it, it's the fundamentals that all pros use to mix their music. So be sure to pick it up. It's really gonna help you out. Before you go, I'd love to hear from you. Are there any of these features that you're particularly excited about, whether you've already switched or you're considering switching from GarageBand? Let me know in the comments below. If this video was helpful, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next week where we're going to go through all the plugins and tools that you get in Logic that you didn't have in GarageBand. One thing at a time, I can